Wonderful. Hello, everyone. Thank you to all of you who have joined us for our first Calling All Women and Allies virtual convening. And this will be the first in a series of bi-weekly convenings. You are welcome to visit itstimenetwork.org, Calling All Women and Allies, to register for upcoming calls. And if you'd like to present on an upcoming call, send us an email to kate at itstimenetwork.org following this call and let her know how you might like to participate. And for those of you who are here today who've known It's Time Network for a long time, um, it's so nice to have you on this call. As many of you know, my name is Betsy McKinney and I'm the founder and CEO of It's Time Network. We also have other It's Time Network staff members on the call and they will be helping to respond to questions at the end. So um, just a couple of quick notes on how this convening will go today. We'll spend the first portion of the call sharing information with you and then we'll take the final portion of the call to answer your questions. Feel free to type them into the Q&A box as they come up for you. And whenever I mention a link, we'll also share it in the chat box. So be sure to check there if you want to know about the links. We'll also be sending you a recording of this call via email uh, in case you want to review or share it later with others, and we'll talk about that later. So first, I want to talk a little bit about It's Time Network's mission and work with you. And It's Time Network is a growing network of individuals and organizations who are working collaboratively to accelerate gender equality. We're building here an infrastructure for collective action and impact city by city, so we can work together across issue areas and across silos for systemic change, and so that we can advance common agendas for gender equality in our communities. So as we work to protect and advance the rights of women and girls, we all know that we live in an increasingly insecure and polarized world, and the need to connect is ever more critical. So we recognize that at its time network, and in order to achieve a world that works for all people and for all life, women have to reach a new level of collective activism and leadership. And we are building the tools for how to build that long-term connection. All of us on this call today know that as individual women, we transform our families, our communities, every single day in big and small ways. And our individual women's organizations are tackling tough local, national, and global issues. As women, we're active in all areas, from women's rights to racial and social justice, economic inequality, environment, poverty, global security, and more. And we realize that none of those are independent issues. They are all connected, and in many ways, they are one and the same thing. But you name it, women are ready to or are already fixing many of the problems that we have in our world today. So at a time when divides seem to be growing, even between women, and when we still seem so far away from achieving gender equity, the question we're asking at It's Time Network is, can we build upon the connections between us, across nations, across political parties, across religion, race, and class, can we find common values and build our capacity for collective action? Individual action is important, and you're learning from many of the organizations you're already involved with about immediate, short-term actions that you can take about the things that you care about. But why is it that collective action is so important? What we found is that many people speak about collective impact and the notion of collective impact, but are not necessarily clear about what exactly collective impact is. So we're gonna to start today with this presentation by showing a short two minute video about collective impact. And it's based on the theory that has been popularized through um, the Stanford Social Innovation Review and a company called FSG and many others now. 
So for just a moment, we'll show this um, slide, and I want you to particularly notice, if you don't know it already, um, that the slide will talk about backbone infrastructure. And that is what we are building at It's Time Network, and we'll discuss that a little bit more later in the call. So um, we will play that slide in just a moment, and here we go. The number and complexity of challenges facing our world can be overwhelming. When individual organizations attempt to tackle the most daunting problems, success stories are all too rare. Many innovative approaches have been tried, too few have worked. However, when organizations work together under the right conditions, they can accomplish great things. One particularly effective means of collaboration is collective impact. Using the collective impact approach, a number of complex social challenges have been addressed and some remarkable results have been achieved. Youth incarcerations dropped by 45% in just three years with no change in public safety, improving the lives of thousands of youths. 6,000 public housing residents were placed in new jobs during the recession. More than 1,000 acres were restored and over 280 million pounds of pollution voluntarily reduced to conserve and restore a river. Organizations utilizing a collective impact approach do the following. Agree to a common goal. Agree to track progress in the same way, which allows for continuous improvement. Do what each does best while identifying new ways to work together. Have consistent communication. And finally, have skilled and dedicated resources to support ongoing efforts. The world's toughest challenges aren't going away. In fact, many experts predict they will continue to grow in both number and complexity. Solving these problems requires a range of expertise from a number of diverse organizations. Collective impact is a proven approach helping organizations work together to move mountains. Great. So one of the most important things that we want to be sure <clears throat> that people understand about It's Time Network and what we're doing here is that we are working on long-term backbone infrastructure for collective action and impact that was mentioned in the video. And as you can see the examples in that video, it shows how success was done at the local level on environmental issues, uh, on issues that had to do with housing, and a number of different issues. And it allows cross-sector solutions to take place. And so at its time network, we're building the infrastructure that allows collective impact to happen city by city. And we are not just another organization and It's Time Network is not just another network. We are filling what we think is an important gap by building a collective action and collective impact network that begins locally and can scale to the state level, nationally and beyond as we grow the network. So we're using a very specific, though flexible methodology called collective impact. And for many of you, you've heard that term, um, it gets used loosely and should be, and it's helping to popularize the notion, but there's actually a very specific set of things that are required in order to do it. And while I think the tremendous success that happened uh, with the Women's March on Washington, the amount of energy that was, um, developed during that period of time is so fantastic. And now in order to create long-term systemic change, we are presenting a Network City program to allow us to ground that energy city by city using uh, tools and developing the infrastructure that can make us successful for the long-term. And one thing that we know at It's Time Network is this is a long-term build. It takes time and will require diligence and some patience, but depending upon how fast we grow the network, it doesn't have to take that long. So we'll talk more about that at the end of the call, but we wanted to let you know that each component of collective impact has associated tools that help build 
the supportive backbone infrastructure. And so we've developed that structure to facilitate collective impact, as I said, starting at the local level, doing that through our network city program, which establishes local advisory councils with diverse women leaders from across sectors in each city. The local advisory council then begins to assess the status of women and girls in their area using available data and creates collective impact projects with member organizations of the network to address the most pressing needs. And then the Network City Program Local Advisory Council grows the network by inviting more individuals and organizations into the network in their city so that more and more of us city by city are informed and engaged in the changes in our own community and across the network we can begin to share best practices so we're currently piloting the program in san francisco and denver and we are ready to take this program to scale in 2018 and we want your help as cities become part of the network and we have more cities, our capacity for collective action begins to scale from, as we said, the city level to the state, to the national and beyond. So as a result, one of the tools that was created most recently was as a result of a mayor's roundtable event in 2015. It's Time Network began designing a dashboard of tools as part of this necessary long-term infrastructure. With those tools, we can create baseline reports on the status of women, and we can create common agendas for action. We can track measurable goals and outcomes on a regular basis and assess progress or the lack there of it. So one of those tools is our Mayor's Guide to Accelerating Gender Equality. I don't know for sure, but Eleanor LeCain signed up for this web call. And Eleanor, if you're on the call today, I wanted to acknowledge you as you know, the author of the Mayor's Guide and for, um, for doing the project development of this piece of work. It resulted in this Mayor's Guide that you can now download free of charge on the website at It's Time Network. It is essentially a toolkit of readily accessible resources model programs and checklists for supporting the advancement of women and girls in any given community. It's the first of its kind how-to guide with recommendations about specific actions that can be taken by mayors and other city leaders. So the guide has 11 different issue areas where we um, outline a set of solutions that can be implemented in every city. Another essential tool that we are developing in partnership with the Women's Foundation of California is a Women's Wellbeing Index. While reports on the status of women and girls are being produced independently at the global level, at, for example, the United Nations, um, but also at national, state, and local levels, these reports vary significantly. But without a standard set of data points, meaningful comparisons from report to report and from city to city are difficult, if not impossible. So a consistent and comprehensive set and an index is needed for all 50 states. It's Time Network, through the development of a National Women's Wellbeing Index and a city scorecard, will provide an essential set of standard measurement tools to assess each of our cities. Both of our pilot cities demonstrate dis different aspects of collective impact. Right now, the local advisory council in San Francisco is working to build the capacity for collective impact projects. The primary focus right now is on supporting the stronger California legislation, which we'll discuss on our next call on May 2nd. So for those of you on the call, especially women in uh, California, please invite everyone you know to come to the call on May 2nd. If you're not in California, invite women anyway, because you'll get a chance and we all will get a chance to see from our pilot cities what's possible in our own cities, wherever you may be living. 
So on our next call on May 2nd, a leader from the Equal Rights Advocates and a member of the Local Advisory Council will join us to share information about the Stronger California legislation and what we can do to help advocate for it. If you're interested in learning more about Equal Rights Advocates or the Stronger California legislation now, we just added links with that information in the chat box and it will be part of our follow-up email um, that we'll send to you after this call. So if you'd like to learn more, as I said, join our May 2nd call and you can register at the website. If you live in the Bay Area, if you'd like to join the network and you're not officially a member, please do so. You can participate in the ongoing collective impact work that we're doing and we'd love to have you as part of the network. We will share a link to the San Francisco chapter in the chat box now as well. So we're also looking for organizations to join the network. If you are connected to a Bay Area organization who is working for change, please send them our information or get in touch with us to connect us. You'll also be getting in that follow-up email a link where you'll be able to uh, recommend organizations that can join the network. Whether or not it's San Francisco or Denver, our pilot cities, or in your own city. So one of the meaningful ways you can participate right now is to help um, provide information about organizations that you think should be part of the network. We're also launching a pilot chapter in Denver this year. Denver's It's Time, I'm sorry, It's Time, it's time 2017, the Denver Gender Equity Summit. Uh, is being produced in partnership with the City of Denver on a first ever gathering of statewide mayors to focus on gender equality. The summit on May 31st, 2017 will yield a Denver Women's Agenda featuring key policy recommendations for the mayors. Best practices and recommendations from Denver will be used to update the existing It's Time Network guide. So when you go to the website after the Denver Summit, you'll be able to click on the Mayor's Guide and see what is relevant from the first guide that was produced in San Francisco. You'll also be able to click on the Denver links to see how Denver is dealing with each of those issue areas that are in the guide. As we go forward in, in other cities, you'll begin to see how the guide becomes a place for sharing best practices from city to city. The summit will also be the official launch of the Denver Network City Chapter. So if you're on the call and you live in the Denver Metro area, we invite you also to join the network now as an individual participant so you can support and participate in the Denver Chapter. If you're part of an organization who you think could help move these collective impact projects forward, please share your information uh, please share the information about the Network City program and join the network as well. Okay. Just a moment, because for some reason my slides are not advancing, but I think it will in just a moment. Okay, there we go. So give me one second. Um, so we know that engaged individuals have the power to create the most change. If you're ready to participate in collective, collective action in your city, but we haven't started a chapter there yet, we'd like to invite you to help us build that network in your city. Tell us what city you're in, then help us spread the word in your city. Once we have reached a critical number of individual participants in your city, we can launch a chapter there as well. So we'll send you a follow-up information with an email, with a recording of the call, with links to join the network and spread the word. And for the remainder of today's call, we'd like to open it up now for questions about collective impact, about the Network City program, really anything else that you'd like to discuss today. In our future calls, um, we'll be having guests on the calls and taking the next step into understanding more details about what collective action and impact is and how we can do it together. So right now you can either raise your hand um, through the technology on Zoom or type your question into the Q&A box. 
And I think what I'm seeing right now from Kate is that we already have some questions. So Kate, are you there? And I think you're on mute, Kate. Sorry about that. Hi, everyone. Uh, we do have some questions that have come in. Uh, the first is where we can, where you can find a list of the, of the organizations and individuals who are participating in the Denver Gender Equity Summit. Uh, I'll share a link in the chat box now to uh, the Denver Gender Equity Summit where you can see um, who's participating and what, what that event will look like in greater detail. Great. And I'm guessing, Kate, and in all of our follow-up emails after these calls, any questions that come up, we can provide further information in these follow-up emails, correct? Absolutely. Okay, and great. Perfect. Thank you. Respond to that email as well if you have additional questions that come up Thank after you. the fact. And great. Okay, so let's see. Our next question, um, it is, can anyone join the network or is it limited to women only? So um, women and allies, and I think what we know is that partnership at its time network is critical, that we don't um, stay rigid in definitions of gender um, or any of our ways in which we define ourselves as humans. So everyone is welcome. It's time network is a broadly inclusive network. We encourage people from all political beliefs and persuasions. Um, from racial, social justice divides, all of the divides that we currently have. So women and allies is how we describe it for now. And, uh, and we um, do our best to use non-gender binary terms. And yet we also know that women um, you know, is a primary focus and we wanna be clear about that. Okay, so the next question is, if we join the network, how can we help in our cities right now? So in our cities right now, I think we mentioned earlier in the slide show that um, anyone could help us to become, to list the organizations in your city. So for example, let's just pick a city who maybe not is on the call right now. Maybe someone's calling from, um, I don't know, you know, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> and, um, and we do not yet have a database of women's organizations in Minneapolis, though we have uh, organizations in over 25 cities, we've begun building those lists. So wherever you are from, you can help build the list of organizations that you're aware of that are working on uh, gender equity in your community. So that's one way you can participate. And also, of course, reaching out to other people in your city, telling them about that you're learning about collective impact and that you encourage them to get involved so that they can learn as well and that you can build that capacity together in your community. That's great. Um, so the next question is around um, joining the network. So we, we mentioned that we ask new network, uh, new individual participants in the network to uh, support the network with a minimum of $12 per year. Uh, this question is asking why $12 specifically? Okay, um, the network is designed to provide a set of um, network services. Those network services are specific in terms of shared communication and the ability for us to convene online, virtually, and you know, in person, in real life. So those network services um, cost money and staff you know, to do, but, they, but because we're not a new organization or another organization, there's a clear set of things that the network services are intended to do. So we ask every person to contribute to those network services and we create and we have created a um, network service fee. And at a minimum, we're asking people to contribute $1 per month, but a, a yearly $12 or more. Many women will give and the allies will give much more than that. We have macro donors who will be giving gifts in a very large amount but we want it affordable so that it's inclusive for everyone. And we also, there will be opportunities for women to contribute as a pay it forward so that you can help pay for a minimal um, contribution for women who cannot. So it's to keep it affordable. Is that clear, Kate? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and um, we also have other calls, uh, questions that are starting to come in right now. And 
Um, Dahlia Goldenberg is asking, and um, Dahlia, would you like to, um, uh, Kate, are, are we able right now to bring people on and let them ask the question themselves, or how would we facilitate, or should I just read the question? Well, let's just let's just say out loud if you if you'd prefer to raise your hand, there's a we have the capacity to you can uh, select the raise your hand button on your screen and then you can we can virtually call on you and and your video will come up if you're on video or your voice if you're on the phone and then you can answer ask your question out loud rather than tape it into the the, the q a box if you prefer otherwise we can just read your question from the q a screen so whatever you're more comfortable with or prefer works for okay us. so dahlia raised her hand and her question is, and two more participants have, but Dahlia uh, wants to know, how do you balance the role of different organizations in the network? And to what degree are the citywide networks run by its time network staff? I'm trying to understand how collective ownership of the network takes place in practice. And she says, this is amazing, exclamation point. So, Perfect question, Dahlia. And balancing the role of different organizations in the network um, happens at the local advisory council level. And so that core group of uh, diverse women leaders represent different organizations, but they're not there to represent just their own organization. They are there to um, reach out to all the organizations in their city and in order to um, develop the data required to understand the status of women and girls in their community. And so then based on the organizations in the network, specific collective impact initiatives can be designed that include member network organization, organ, organization members in the network in those initiatives so that people can contribute through their organization, their specific expertise. And it becomes this tremendous opportunity for working together. So your question is also about how much are the citywide networks run by its time network staff? Each local advisory council um, will be facilitated by a network city manager in each city. And so as the network grows in a city and we're able to hire a network city manager, based on the number of people who are contributing participants in the network and supporting it financially, we're able to hire a network city manager. That network city manager um, is part of a cohort of network city managers who are learning about collective impact and learning how to facilitate the local advisory council so that those members on the local advisory council are not asked to be doing double duty, not only doing all their own work in their organizations, but trying to run a whole new network. So the network city manager is designed to ease and facilitate uh, the smooth functioning of the local advisory council. And that network city manager is supported by the national network city uh, director who is well versed in collective impact and has uh, the ability to understand how the pilot cities have contributed to uh, our learning in, in ways that the local advisory councils can function even more smoothly. Okay, and so then you were trying to understand how collective ownership of the network takes place in practice. And so it is by allowing that local advisory council to assess the status in its own community, begin building its own solution sets that are personalized and customized to the needs in their local community based on their local advisory council figuring out what's most important. Okay, so um, the next question, go ahead, Kate. I just wanna quickly, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna bring Dahlia up um, in case. Dahlia, do, I just wanted to check and make sure that we answered your question. Are you, are you on the phone now? On the line? Okay, it might have gone away. Okay, just wanted to make sure I check in with her. But okay, um, yeah. Okay, so Julie Van Ness raised her hand, but I'm gonna go first to Roger Eaton. And um, Roger asks, uh, would interfaith organizations and individuals be welcome in the network? Absolutely, yes. And I think, Roger, that's a perfect example of um, 
one of the values at its time network um, is partnership and interdependence and the the work that the interfaith movement is doing right now to bridge divides is so powerful and would love to talk with you more about who might be some speakers and presenters to have on these calls as we go forward so love that question thank you that's really helpful and absolutely welcome yes we have dahlia on video now dahlia there she is dahlia did we answer your question or do you have more yeah, uh, am I on? Yes, uh -huh. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, you absolutely answer the question. Um, I think I have more to say on that, so thank you. Okay. And, and where are you, Dolly? Where are you collaborating? I'm in New York City. Okay, great. Oh, we have lots of women in New York City that are part of the network, and it'll be great to get you connected if you aren't already. Um, I just wanted to say quickly, especially while you're on, one of the reasons why we're using this technology is that regular online convening and connecting is essential for us to see and hear and feel each other, right? And so just seeing your face and bringing you here um, just builds the connection, right? So as this network grows, we have the capacity to have 15,000 women on the call at a time. And to be able to elevate people to the status so that they can be seen when they speak. And so we too are practicing the technology right now. We need women in the network to be really skilled in using this technology because it takes a little practice. We also can then break up into groups. So we could click a button right now, theoretically, and divide everybody up by state. And so all of a sudden, Dal, you'd be connected to all the women on the call in New York State. But that takes time and we need groups where we can practice. And so the calls going forward every week, we're just going to keep practicing and we're building our capacity. So, um, Kate, do we have other questions or Dahlia, do you have any questions? Yeah, we have a, a question. Dahlia, do you have any, are you, do you have any other questions or are you all set? Because I'm here, I'll just add on that I'm, I'm excited to hear who else is connected to the network in New York City. Um, I run a network of women community organizers, different social justice community organizing groups across the city, and I'm also connected with some statewide women's networks. So, I, my question was sort of curiosity about how all these different interesting networks can fit into this, uh, this opportunity. Yeah, and, and Dali, just to, to learning more. And just to be specific, in New York, you know, one of the considerations was for our next network city beyond Denver and San Francisco. Many women have said, oh, do New York. And then other women have said, whoa, New York is pretty complicated. Um, and so it's possible that New York, um, it might be that we do it borough by borough, um, because there's, New York just has a wealth of organizations and women, it's fairly complex. So it might need to be broken down into smaller districts rather than just one city. So we're thinking about that and we'd love to hear any feedback you have about it. Are we going back now or are we uh, No, uh, in the future. I mean, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Dahlia. Great. Okay. Thanks, Dahlia. Uh, now we have Julie Van Nest uh, has raised her hand. I'm going to put her Great. And I also just want to encourage anyone who wants to practice coming online in a video, just practice with us. You don't even have to say anything except, hi, I did it. <laughs> okay, we have Julie Van Nest on the line now. Hi, Julie. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes. I apologize. All right, so I went dark for a minute. Uh, my name is Kevin Majacomo, and I'm in Boston, Massachusetts. And, and you know, I, I wanted to take the opportunity to weigh in here, not necessarily with a question, but just to amplify and, and let you know how important, powerful, and impactful the work is uh, that, it, that it's time and related networks are doing. So my story quickly is I'm the CEO of SVN, which is a, an international commercial real estate services company. Commercial real estate is an industry which you could say has historically been dominated by you know, white male baby boomers and hasn't been the beneficiary of much innovation. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud to report that um, as a company, beginning three years ago, we began to take deliberate action and intentional action to affect real change for diversity and gender balance 
And it would have been so much easier if organizations like yours were present and had the toolkits that enabled us to get off to a faster start. We did work with a team from an organization called Real Leaders and, and Julie Van Ness, who is going to be on the call, who delivered that to us from the private sector, from a private standpoint, and in 12 months, coached us to restructure our statutory board. We restructured our executive team for gender balance. We implemented a host of initiatives geared towards attracting and developing women and minorities. And, and my message here is that the financial results followed. So 42% of our recruited managing directors in 2016 were women and minorities. Uh, our recent training and recruiting programs featured close to 50% women. Our risk is at an all-time low. Our profits are at an all-time high. So just a shout out for the business case for working about and working on gender equity uh, causes such as the good work that you're doing. Oh. Kevin, thank you so much, and it's nice to meet you via this technology, and um, you'll be happy to hear that we believe the next network city uh, in the program is going to be Boston, and there's a core group of women that we're working with right now who um, are, you know, very uh, key stakeholders in your community, and so uh, Boston is like up on deck, right? And um, and uh, it'll be fun to maybe try to schedule a call with you. Uh, Carrie Norton is on the line right now with us. Uh, she's the CAO of It's Time Network. And um, Carrie, I don't know if you would like to say anything to Kevin you know, about the funding model that we're gonna be talking about in future calls, but it involves real estate, Kevin, and we know that women need to own collective assets together. So It's Time Network will be a collectively owned um, asset that um, is for the benefit of all women and one of the things that we know is that we need to own real estate in every city to facilitate our convenings in person and many other types of real estate that brings um, that helps women build wealth and we mean building collective wealth so Carrie are you on the call and is there anything further you might like to say there um, actually, hi everyone. I would just say thank you so much for sharing that example and Kevin and um, I would encourage all of you who have case studies or examples of where uh, intentionally focusing on gender equity has either benefited your businesses or pr pr produced demonstrable results to please let us know and be in touch with us and share those stories because the more stories we share with the network, the more examples that we'll see propagate throughout the network. Great. Uh, thank you so much. I look forward to collaborating. Great, Kevin. Thank you. And um, Kate, do we have any other raised hands currently or any further questions in the queue? Yeah, but we do, ha we do have another question. Okay, great. This is from Kylie. Uh, what would constitute a critical mass, either in terms of numbers of organizations or individual participants, um, to be sufficient to launch a chapter in a new city? or? Um, also, I it was also rephrased to say, how can we champion a launch in a new city? Mm -hmm. So great question, Kaylee. And we're working right now on the financial model for the Network City program for each individual city. And hopefully you'll be glad to hear that each city is unique. So for some cities that are smaller, it's going to require less resources. For a big city like New York, we would really need a good set of resources so that we have the administration and staff capacity to handle the level of engagement that would begin to happen. So um, it would be helpful. Can you type in what city are you from? And, um, and then, we're, so we're going to be taking on a city by city basis, but we've been doing the budgeting to uh, look at, you know, what are some minimum part-time hires that we could do for the network city manager in any given city so that we can have a small number of women, like say 100 or 500 or 1,000, you know, in any city that would be able to um, do, begin funding on a part-time basis. So uh, in San Francisco, for example, even though we're a very large city, we started, we have a part-time position for the uh, network city manager. So um, Kate, did, uh, did she have, did she let us know what city she's in? Not yet, no. Okay, so anyway, that gives you an example that we can customize things uh, city by city. And I want to just underscore that's one of the great things about collective impact methodology is that while it is a very specific 
and effective methodology for achieving real measurable results. There's the opportunity for the structure to be flexible so that it represents the important diverse conditions in any city and that it also allows for different entry points into the collective impact model. And I'll explain that for just a second. In San Francisco, we started with developing the local advisory council, which is bringing together um, key stakeholders. And we're beginning with supporting what is already a common agenda, which is the stronger California legislation. But in Denver, the entry point is a common agenda because a set of stakeholders said, we don't want to start the local advisory council right away. We want to get right to an agenda and our mayor is ready to go. So we've supported the development of uh, key stakeholders to convene in person to build a common agenda. And we weren't rigid and said, oh no, you can't do that until you have a local advisory council. So we know that being flexible and adaptable is exactly what's required. So I'm sure we can find that in your city or any given city as we go forward. Um, and Kylie is from LA, so we do know. Oh, LA, yes. So we have a lot of women in LA who are very eager and excited. So um, it would be great, Kylie, if you reach out to people and invite them to come to the web calls or to visit the website and just contribute, you know, and Every contribution that comes into It's Time Network is tracked by zip code so that we know that where um, resources are coming so that we can um, develop the Network City program tracked by those resources. So tell your friends, and, and I know for myself, I can tell every woman I know, yes, join for $1 a month. I can afford that, we all can afford that, and we must build our capacity for collective action and all of you on the call, I'm sure, can still do the math. You know, if we have a million women in the network giving it a minimum of $12, we can fund a tremendous amount of collective impact. And, and I want you to really hear this. With collective impact methodology, the administration portion is lean, given what it can achieve overall. So, um, that money goes directly to supporting the Network City program and being able to affect change in your community directly. So spread the word in LA and we'll be tracking it by um, zip code. That's great. Okay. Uh, that covers it for questions at this point. Um, if anyone else has any remaining questions, feel free to raise your hand right now or submit it to the chat box. Okay. Um, otherwise, I think, I think we're all set. Well, let's, uh, while we're waiting, see if anyone else wants to try coming on to say hello, because um, we have a few minutes left, um, but we can end um, sooner if we're all done. But Kate, let's talk a little bit about the next call so people have a sense of what's coming up, because this was just a beginning. The exciting part is really going to start to unfold week by week as we go forward. So Kate, do you want to describe that a little bit more? Yeah, of course. Um, so we'll be hosting calls similar to this they'll, they'll vary in terms of obviously the content um, over the next several weeks uh, we're going to be hosting them at the, this time every two weeks so 12 p.m pacific time 3 p.m eastern standard time um, every two weeks on on tuesday um, and we we have all the links for registering for these calls all live on the website now so you can register now and put them on your calendar um, and you can go there at www.itstimenetwork.org slash calling all women um, again they're open to women allies anybody who, who wants to participate in these calls um, and also i want to make note that if if you want to sign up to register for the calls but you can't attend um, you should still register through zoom because we'll send you you'll be put on a list of um, call registrants and then following the call we'll send you all of the links that we uh, talk about on the call as well as a recording of the call so you can you can watch it after the fact if, if that is helpful to you and then you know you can always email us with any questions that you have so um, you can participate in the same way um, but we're, we're going to be talking about a variety of, of um, topics we've uh, been uh, polling our individual participants in the network 
over the past several weeks to find out what, what they want to learn about and how they want to get involved in this network. So we're going to be covering those topics and, and more. Um, so next week, or the next call, which is on May 2nd, from at, again at 12 p.m. Pacific time, um, will be about the Stronger California legislation. And as Betsy uh, said earlier in the call, we'll have a leader from the Equal Rights Advocates, who's also a member of our San Francisco lo Local Advisory Council, on the call to talk about the Stronger California legislation, share the work that the Local Advisory Council is doing right now to, to move that forward, and also share any ways that you can, you can get involved in supporting um, that legislation moving forward forward. And so, Kate, can I chime in there for a second? Um, so for those of you who are not from California, it is so important that you are on that call as well because you would be imagining, wow, what would happen if we had a stronger, you know, um, you know, Tennessee legislation? What if we had stronger New York legislation? Um, how could this be relevant in your community? And, and so that's the whole purpose of the network, learning from the pilot cities and learning from any city as they come online. There are tremendous best practices for us to share now amongst our networks. And, and this is the fun and engaging work that, um, that we can do proactively in our communities while many organizations are working on um, what they would call resistance or the things that they're concerned about and people do that across the political spectrum right so um, but we want to pr promote what are the things that we can do proactively that are already being successful in different communities to empower women and girls so every call is relevant to every city and every state as we share best practices okay go ahead Kate no, that's great. We actually did just get um, one more question from Dahlia, so I just wanted okay. to um, read that quickly. So she said, if we want to find out how to connect to other network partners in our city, what is the process for that? Um, so right, we will be uh, launching Facebook groups, private Facebook groups for um, each network city chapter uh, in the coming weeks. And so once you join, once you go through the individual participation process, which again, you can just we, you can go to the website that's listed um, on the slide here now to to move forward with that. Once you join the network, you will be um, yeah. you are invited to join that that Facebook group. So you can on that Facebook group, people will be sharing you know upcoming events, initiatives, how you can engage with um, what's happening with the local advisory council and other organizations work um, and then as you can also you'll also have access to uh, or the ability to connect then with other uh, network city net other individual participants in your network city chapter okay so after may 2nd what's the next call after that um so there'll be every two weeks after that so we have may 2nd and then may 16th and then actually we'll be skipping a week for the Denver Gender Equity Summit. Um, so we, cause we're gonna be live in Denver that week. So we'll be resuming again on June 7th. And again, the registration links are all live on the website. So you can go and register now, whether or not you can actually attend live, uh, sign up to, so that you'll be reminded of the, of the call and then you'll get the recording afterwards, even if you aren't able to make it. Great, and did you see Victoria Perel just raised her hand? Were you able to see that, Kate? Yeah, I'm not, I, I, I don't see her raising her hand now. Okay, so maybe she will again, but uh, Victoria raised her hand. And, um, and then I guess we'll give it just another moment to see if Victoria tries again. And then otherwise maybe we'll wrap up for today. And um, Carrie, do you, anything that we missed on today's call or any uh, concluding thoughts that you might have? Um, I would just love, I know we'll be following up with all of you with a bunch of resources and um, more information about the upcoming calls. So we're really thrilled that you could join today and we hope you'll make this a priority on your calendars. Um, as part of that, I'm hoping we can get more information about what all of you are doing mm -hmm. already to engage in advancing women's leadership in your communities, especially in the context of the Women's March and what's coming out of that. Um, we, we'd love to hear what are the ways in which you're finding to plug in to stay committed to advancing or protecting women's rights and girls' rights and women's leadership um, throughout the country. We, we are partnering 
um, informally with a number of different initiatives, with some of which you'll hear from on future calls. Yes. And we'd love to hear from you about where you're finding the most engagement and, and seeing the most progress um, beyond any, um, any part participation in, the, in its time network. So we'll be um, looking forward to hearing more from you all about that. Great, thank you, Carrie. Kate, do we have any other uh, questions or are we ready to close? I think that, that covers it. I think we're ready. Okay, all right. Well, thank you everyone for your time. We're excited that you joined the call today and looking forward to our next call on May 2nd. And until then, uh, be well and spread the word. Share with other people and help us grow the network. And right now the network, It's Time Network is, um, is significant in size and that we have um, been very successful in many of our calls um, that were leading up to the Women's March. So now building this series, Calling All Women in order to build collective impact is our next stage. So everyone's welcome. Bring everyone in and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next call. Okay, bye.